this video we're going to build our first iOS application using the IDE Xcode. Let's go ahead and launch Xcode. Recall Xcode is available as a free download from Apple's App Store. We'll go ahead and select create a new Xcode project. We're asked which template would we like to use. As we're building an application for our iOS, we're going to have the selection Single View Application. The product name will be Hello World. The organization name will be a Algonquin College email address. For the company identifier, I ask that you follow the format of what's known as the reverse URL. So for yourself, you'll set it to com.algonquincollege. and then your college network username. The prefix will be Hello World. Set the device to be iPhone. Notice that Xcode allows us to develop for both iPhone as well as iPad. For this example, we're only going to consider iPhone. And I'm going to have you unselect these checkboxes. I suspect by default they're already um, they're enabled or checked, so you'll just uncheck them. In our future iOS course, we'll talk about storyboarding and unit tests. These are um, activities that we do as part of the software development lifecycle. Go ahead and click Next. I'm going to store my project file under uh, Documents, and then I've created a folder called MAD9111 dash hardware. Feel free to, to select your project somewhere else, move it somewhere else. What's important is you remember where you stored your project. I'm going to uh, click Create. Now we see that Xcode presents us with the, uh, the project. Notice that quite a few files were created for us. These are default files. Uh, for example, we have the Hello World app delegate dot H. Dot H stands for a header file. And uh, that's known as the UI delegate, where the view and the controller are defined in this header file. But as said, when we have our future iOS course, we'll go into more depth on these various uh, files. The one that we're interested in to the today is the one ending with the extension XIB. I'll pronounce it ZIB. You go ahead and click it and notice that it changes to what we call a WYSIWYG. A WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. And it presents a stylized view of what the an application would look like on an iPhone. And that's indicated by the little battery symbol there. Think of this as our palette and allows us to drag and drop components, objects, onto this, um, this screen. So here it is here. And this is technically known as our view as part of the model view controller, MVC. And recall, we selected a single view application. If we go here, you click this one, and with the mouse over we saw it was, let's go back to it see if I can get the mouse over. It says show the object library. These are the various objects that we can drag and drop onto our view. I'm going to select the label I've left clicked and I'm holding my thumb down on the pad and I'm going to drag over this label and I'm going to drop it onto the view surface and I'm going to try to align it here. Notice that the properties for this label object now appear here. So let's change the static text from label to be hello world. So we'll say hello world exclamation mark. Let's go ahead and change the font size. Let's increase that. This is using a spinner component. And uh, let's increase it to a font size of 30. And let's go ahead and drag and drop this out. Uh, let's expand it change its width and its height and uh, with the tick bars you can see I can center it on my view surface and um, for a little change why don't we cha change the text color to be another color and I click the crayon box and for today I'm going to select red or maraschino, maraschino cherries. I like maraschino cherries. We'll go ahead and select that. 
Let's go ahead and add another label. Once again, I selected the label. I'm holding my thumb down, what's known as a left uh, drag and drop, and I'm going to drop it on my view surface. I'm going to stretch that label out a little bit. And we're going to change the static text to be author, colon, and then I'm going to put my name. I ask that uh, you uh, identify yourself because we're going to take a screenshot uh, of the simulator and that will be the artifact for the lab. Well, let's go ahead and save our project. Notice that we can do the command S, but I've gone to the, uh, the file system, the menu bar, pardon me, and I've gone file save. And now I can go over to Xcode into the title area and I can click uh, the run button to, that will build and run the, the current project and it will simulate it in the iOS simulator. Let's go ahead and do that. So we saw that there were no issues concerning the build, meaning I uh, was syntactically correct and that it was bundled okay. And we see that another um, application launch. This is the iOS simulator. As the title suggests, this is simulating an iPhone. And there we are. We have Hello World, author Jerry Hurdle. I'll ask that you take a screenshot as uh, evidence as part of the deliverable for the lab. Notice we do have some behavior in our iOS simulator. If we click the this button here, the application is closed and it does appear in our system, in our um, in our tray, in our our, our, home, our home view. Pardon me. In future courses, we'll learn how to set the icon for the application, etc. Let's see if there's anything else that we can do in iOS. There's other settings we can do. We can get up the keyboard. We launch our application. That concludes this video. Before I go, I should say, uh, tell you a little bit about the history of Hello World. Hello World has a long-standing tradition in the computer science um, area. It's traditional that when you have a new language that you greet the world, writing Hello World uh, in that language. And this dates back from the late 60s, early 1970s with the C language. One of the very first um, applications that was written by Kernig and Ritchie, the authors of the C language, was Hello World. So it's very common for folks when they're introduced to their new language that they write and greet the world with Hello World. Congratulations, you've now done that for iOS.